Yeah. Now then, panellists, we're running out of time, so I'm just going to give you a minute or so each to sum up, really. So for people who've been watching this, whether they've been suppliers, the, the, the end customer, uh, consultants or whatever, um, what would you want them to take away from what we've discussed in the last uh, few minutes? Well, it's been a fascinating uh, conversation ac across you know, different uh, elements of the supply chain here. But uh, I think it's grasped the opportunity now that we're in a period of change. Uh, make those changes work for you as an individual and as an as a organisation. Because these, these opportunities, they might seem uh, uh, pretty bleak, but look for that silver lining. Because I think finding better ways to do things, there's never going to be a better opportunity than there is right now. Um, for me too, I mean that's definitely a very good point, Phil, that you made. Um, the time is unique for our industry and we really, especially value-oriented suppliers such as ourselves, we have a fantastic opportunity for inserting ourselves. We're seeing that in several of the responsible operators. We probably need to expand the conversation a little bit further. And I think what we're seeing practically and also what came out of the discussion is how do we make sure the similarity of understanding of that urgency that the industry needs goes into the um, into the purchasing, into the supply chain side of it. I also like the thought about the person or the, or the personnel when it comes to trust. So that trust factor is the other side of the coin on risk, right? So we have to make sure that our trust factor is translated by sharing with our customers why are we trustworthy, why are we differentiated, and a lot of it comes down to the people that we put in front of the customers. Yeah, I think there's some made some very good points there. I think never waste a crisis, as, as someone once said, and I think this is that opportunity to to make some changes, not only with how we work with our operators and our customers, but also within our own companies. Uh, and that's what I would like to kind of take away from this kind of discussions. I think also when I look uh, at some of the topics we've talked about in innovation, I wouldn't want to stifle innovation. I think this is should drive us to 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 the end game to something more economical, more sustainable for the future. So. Yeah, no, I agree with all the uh, all the, all the panelists. Summing, summing up, it's. Uh, um, it's, it's, it's maybe uh, a time to uh, be more optimistic. You know, we've been with lots of grey clouds kicking around, looking at uh, looking at the dollar price every uh, every day or every week, whatever your habits uh, manifest themselves. But uh, it's yeah, a great opportunity to, uh, like you say, it's a potential feeling of crisis to a certain extent. Well, if if we can somehow uh, get get various levels in the uh, in the value chain talking to each other, I think that's that's key. So up and up and down. Um, does that um, does that Willingness to to to, uh, to uh, submit ideas and listen to ideas and act on ideas qu uh, quickly, then there's a there's a great opportunity to make a make a make a bit of a step change uh, going forward. You know, irrespective of what happens to the oil price, um, being a, in a leaner, quicker, faster, more exciting uh, market in the future. Fabulous. Well, John, thank you very much. And Philip, David, and Phil. Thank you for uh, some excellent contributions and a fascinating uh, chat there. It is the Trelleborg Offshore Next Level Report and you can download it at the website. Thank you for watching.